So it seems that everybody is preparing for the stock market to start its descent. We're going to talk about that in today's video. I have timestamps in the description below. I'm going to be bringing on a quote unquote leading indicator in the commodities section, something that I found to be very interesting that Sven Henrik pointed out. And I want to dig into that a little bit deeper because if you saw it or if you didn't see it, it's important to kind of keep an eye on because it does act, like I said, as a leading indicator. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Michael Silva. This is the Stock Market Brief Show. I've got an action packed episode up ahead. So let's just get into it. All right, everybody, welcome back. We're gonna start off here at the market dashboard, see what took place today in the markets on this Tuesday. I've been gone on a little trip, so it's good to be back. But I tell you what, you leave for a couple of days and you come back and all of a sudden it's like, ah, it's like a new market again. Down pretty much across the board here, Dow Jones, S&P 500, NASDAQ 100. As you can see with the VIX slightly up there, what was there at the top of the list? Utilities, more of a defensive play, kind of makes sense, but nothing too crazy overall. I mean, the market's been on a monster tear up. Let's take a look at the heat map of the S&P 500. And you can see some big red names here. Tesla being one of them. You have PayPal, PayPal down there, which uh, reported on earnings, I believe it was. And then Amazon was one of the stronger performers, kind of holding the market together uh, for not falling further. Let's take a look at Tesla really quick. Look at, we were talking about this big run up. This is not something you want to just chase up to the top. You need to be very careful in these environments. It's, you know, this is considered a, a short squeeze or a gamma squeeze, whatever you want to call it. But you can see here just a massive day to the downside one big big red candle because what goes up you know it comes down eventually at some point take a look at nvidia nvidia has also been on this monster tear up is it done i can't tell you if it's done or not but it's not exactly the place where i'd be wanting to press long and as you can see you can have days like this and we'll probably see something similar this is a pretty nasty looking candle right this big gap up and it completely reversed we're still up here you know, at around all time highs. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see this come back. Just look at the 20 day moving average. It's in the middle of the Bollinger Bands. It's, it's very disconnected from that. And when you get these large percentage point disconnects from this, you get typically retracement. Take a look at AMD also making just a monster run up, getting very disconnected. So a couple semiconductor names, you know, that are big market caps have been on these monster tears and, you know, including even AMAT, AMAT, and there's probably going to be a time of consolidation or, you know, a pullback into the area of support to potentially find a new long. Coinbase over uh, after hours is reporting on earnings. Look at that big drop off. Um, wow. Like, so first off, where do we close at? Right around, uh, where do we close? 357. And now we're trading around 311 right now. So it's going to be an interesting day come tomorrow. UPST, so upstart holdings whoa in the after hour session so it was down six percent on the day gap down so we're looking to open up tomorrow around this price in the 250 range so a big drop off um, in the after hour session if we take a look at what paypal did i was watching this falling wedge into this area of support we broke out of that falling wedge and notice how it just kind of just trickled around a couple of days here and we didn't get any price action to move above i was very hesitant to take any position and if i were to take a position which i did not take a position i would have done it with a some sort of a spread like i was looking for a bullish thing as pulled into support but you can see here coming into earnings you need to be very very mindful of the risk involved and you can see here just a big gap down getting pretty overextended to the downside on the Bollinger Band, but it's not something that I would just, just run right into, you know, and chase. Let's hop into the S&P 500. S&P 500, monster tear up right into this wedge. And we're seeing a little bit of weakness, but we're still, you know, we're not far away from all-time highs. PPO is kind of curling itself over. RSI is coming down from that overbought territory. So yeah, a come uh, to reconnect. Let's take, actually, let's zoom in here. A reconnect can be where? Well, I'd say right here at around 452 on the SPY or the 20-day moving average, right? A reconnect there, I mean, it might seem crazy, um, but it's, it's you know, like, I mean, by seem crazy, I mean, it might feel crazy while it's happening because this run up right here, you know, you can be blindfolded and throw darts at a dartboard and, you know, make big wins on, you know, made it easy for us. You know, if you're part of the Discord group, we have, you know, I'm very selective on the stocks 
that I put out there for the trade ideas. I want to make sure they're good risk to rewards. And some of those have just been just rippers um, and they've been taken off. Now it might get a little bit difficult coming into, you know, these, you know, uh, mid November to the end of November until we find ourselves some footing. But, you know, look at it's just one way market direction. And now it might come down a little bit or it's consolidating. We need we need more time here. And you just need to be very patient in this current environment. If you take a look at the SPY on the 15 minute time frame, writing right there on the five day moving average could be potentially a pennant for me where we continue to press higher. As you can see, the PMO is crossing over to bullish right here. But uh, you know, the futures market, I'm looking at it right now, it's it's down slightly. So take a look at this level right at around 460, uh, I believe that is. Yeah, right around 460. I can't see that. Just blocking my view. Um, let me see. If I'm gonna go. No, not sorry. Not 460. 465. That's 465. Yeah. So a 465. If that area is broken, we could see some further weakness down to the 460 to 462 range. So that'd be what I'm paying attention to. Let's look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Also, we broke out. It's been a monster run up. Not much to report. Saw a little bit of a down day today. So it did put in a lower high and a lower low today. And you know, it's kind of a bearish type pattern right here where if we get continuation if we start breaking down from the low of this candle 36173 we can have further downside where can it go let's look at the 20 day moving average right that's right around this previous resistance bam broke out acted as support headed up higher pull back to 35750 okay cool then we'll start looking for hedge longs dia on the 15 minute time frame you can see here we we have a pretty much just a gap right here that's holding as an area of support. So if it starts cracking down through this 361, there could be some more further downside, but pay attention. The PMO's bullish crossover. It's still above the five-day inclining moving average. So just like the S&P 500, it's in short-term bullish context. As we're getting overextended, you just need to be mindful and you need to be careful. That's, that's it. NASDAQ 100 coming to the upper range, right, of this channel that we've been watching big, huge, aggressive move to the upside, disconnected clearly from the 20-day moving average. Where can we pull back to? Well, I'd be looking at 15,750, right? That's where the 20-day moving average is coming up to. And that's where this previous resistance is there. Potentially even the 50-day moving average, right? You can see the PMO curling itself over. Yeah, like, right, there's more risk to go long right here than there is reward. As you can see, we hit up in these areas, we fall. We hit up in this area, we fall. We hit up in this area, we fall. We hit up in this area, and we're seeing a little bit of weakness. Okay, that can it doesn't mean that it can't turn around and end it higher. It just, you want to play the risk to reward game. And if you're pressing all your positions in long and you feel like you missed this run up and now you're chasing, well, you're gonna end up like this, right? It, you could end up lucky, but you know, people are buying, the people actually bought here, right? People bought here. That's that's price action up here. So whoever bought up here is, you know, buying calls or buying the equity itself, you know, wakes up the next day and it's like down 12%. So it's, you just need to be, like I said, extremely careful in this environment. Russell 2000 broke out, seeing a lot of strength here. You know, it broke out of a year consolidation and we're seeing massive strength on this move. Is it going to come back to back test? I, I can't tell you that for certain, but if it does, start looking at around 235 to 233, that zone and the 20-day moving average, because if it comes back to back test and it acted as resistance for a year, chances are that's going to act as some support. And if this came back and crashed down, that'd be one nasty bull trap. But by a pullback down into this area, that would allow for a very good risk to reward trade. Is it going to get there? Like I said, I don't know, especially being coiled up for over a year. You would think that this thing has some legs to continue its ascent. Is that the right word? I don't know if that's the right word. Let's look at the IWM on the 15 minute time frame. Still short term bullish context above the five day moving average. PMO crossing over to bullish. That seems to be the theme. The only thing I can see as a short term pattern here is a potential bear flag, which can take us where? Well, maybe around 234 to 235, and that can get us below the five day moving average. So, yeah. This has been a monster run up, right? We're talking about hedging long right here, and we just went vertical, right? Boom. And we haven't even had, you know, we've now had a down day, but we went multiple days without even having really a down day. So, like I said, still, it's in short term bullish context. Price charts are getting overextended. So what do you need to do? You need to be patient. That's just what you got to do. Let's look at some indicators. This is where it gets interesting. We're going to take a look at the VIX on the 30-minute time frame. The VIX has been rising, surprisingly, while the market has been pressing higher too. I want to call out the possibility 
for a double bottom here. And as you can see, a double bottom, it comes down, creates this little W shape, and then we break through that W and it could potentially head higher. So if this is true, I mean, I would say our target could be right around 21 to potentially even up to 24.50 on the VIX, right? So you can see the W, we broke above it. That doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be taking place, but we've been watching these two gaps above us. And guess what? This gap acted as resistance and got filled. This gap could do the same exact thing. So that is what I'm watching here in the short term. And if you look on the daily time frame, actually tells a little bit different of a story, right? You can see there's a shooting star type candle as we're moving to the upper range of this Bollinger Band right here. Doesn't mean that we can't press through it as the RSI is getting above 50 and you have the bullish crossover on the PPO. But typically sometimes when you get up in these overextended areas, it pulls back a little bit and maybe the middle of the range right? Maybe 16.5. And then we can maybe see a, um, a another move higher. So it's 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 just a very interesting time overall. Now the NIMOT, this is the Nisey McClellan S, uh, oscillator, this traditional calculation here, still has negative divergence that has been building. And you can see as the market's pressing up to all time highs, this is putting in a lower reading. We've called that out here. We saw the move down. We saw the bullish divergence here and we saw the ramp up. We saw the negative divergence right here and it actually went down too. Now the negative divergence we're adding to that. So be very mindful of that. And you can see here on the NIMO, this is just a ratio adjusted, different calculations, same indicator. You can see that we've been extended in the black here for quite some time, multiple days, but it has been putting in lower readings that the price action is moving higher, which really it, 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 it means something when it means something. But as of right now, we can just call it for what it is. It's a negative divergence, but it hasn't actually moved itself to the downside yet. It's just something to be aware of. If you take a look at the BPNDX, BPNDX is still a negative divergence. And this typically means that the market can roll itself over, at least in the NASDAQ 100. We have a high to a lower high. We have a high to a higher high in the chart. And the um, today we saw the NASDAQ as far as the price action goes, a little bit overextended on the upper range of the channel. And we're starting to see it back off a little bit. So once again, another reason why to just be very careful here and not to, you know, go all in or make any rash decisions, right? We're going to have multiple setups. You know, if you're doing this for the long run, you need to just focus, you know, on your risk, right? It's not about, you know, making money extremely fast. It's about surviving in the markets um, over the course of time and being very tactical uh, to make sure that you're adding to your profits and your, your wins are larger um, and, they, and they take longer to accumulate where your losses, you cut them short and you get rid of them fast, right? That's that's the e uh, easy way to look at it, at least. NIAD, advanced decline volume line, still negative divergence. You can see price action move higher, but the volume cumulative line has been declining here on a negative divergence. Meanwhile, the advanced decline uh, issue line for the NIAD, this has broke out to all time highs. We broke out back, test and moved up higher. So this is, that is bullish. I'm um, getting a little overextended, turned down slightly today. Market also did slightly. So it's in correlation right now. They are moving hand in hand. There is no negative divergence. Um, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. Let's take a look at the dollar. The dollar down slightly on the day. Typically when you have the dollar go down, the markets actually benefit from that, but we've been seeing these overextended readings. So it hasn't been, but however, commodities have played out pretty well with the down date in the dollar. We'll get into that here momentarily. But meanwhile, if you just take a look at the dollar, it's been going sideways. And what we can may maybe look for is a potentially left shoulder, head, right shoulder, inverse head and shoulder to break out further. And if that were the case, that would put continued pressure on the equity markets. We've been seeing an inverse correlation, but as it stands right now, we haven't gone anywhere for you know, over a month. Uh, well, really, if you look back, we haven't gone anywhere for even longer, but it's been in this tight consolidation since pretty much mid-September, late September right there. Let's take a look at bonds and yields. We talked about this head and shoulders pattern. There's a possibility to break down. It could help tech when the 10-year yield falls. But you can see, um, well, some tech, stocks, some tech stocks have been doing quite well and they've been holding up, but a lot of them during this breakdown, they're already overextended. So it's a very hard read there. We started moving down and the target for this head and shoulder is right around you know, 1.35 on the 10 year yield. So we broke down, saw a little bit more of a down day today, which obviously moves up bonds. You can take a look at the TLT. We talked about this bull flag and that bull flag is getting pretty much a full measured move there, which doesn't mean that it can't go higher, but that was a pretty strong move right into this previous area of resistance. Um, and that's almost there, a full measured move of that bull flag. So uh, price uh, action so far and the bonds and yields is looking um, to be playing out quite well. 
If you take a look at the spreads, the 10 and 2 still remains right at around that 1. 0 0.0 marker it's at 1.05 and then the 30 and 5 spread which is one that i've been paying close attention to has continued to just drag along right here at 0.75 and what you want to look for is a possibility for the inversion or when it you know possibility or when it actually does invert it's still far away from that happening but what's interesting is the five year has been holding up quite strong while the 30 year even the 10 year have been declining a little bit more rapid pace which obviously makes this spread head lower and we'll talk more about that in other episodes let's get into commodities oil big move to the upside today holy moly up 2.71 percent so this thing was just on a rip okay it pulled back that was that little pullback this could be just a quick little rip rally and then we head a little bit lower and consolidate goes back and forth but I'll tell you what that the this range of this candle just spoke like you know a lot about the potential increase in volatility that doesn't necessarily mean it's a you know, being biased in a certain direction it's in bullish context so you would expect it to be bullish um and we did not even come back down to tag this 50-day moving average but you can just see here these last three days big strong move right back up to these previous highs we closed at 84.15 so and we got recaptured that 20-day moving average so oil continues to be very very strong which could very well benefit the um, energy sector if you take a look at copper copper broke out a very strong breakout uh, you know it's funny it's like stairs it's the elevator up and the stairs down here and you know some people call this dr copper because it's a good leading indicator of the economy and you can see it pull back into these back into these moving averages over here the pmo is starting to curl itself back up maybe it's building a base to potentially head higher which I mean, you know, you, you got to wonder, like with the CRB index ripping higher, oil heading higher, but we're talking still <laughs> inflation is transitory. You know, it's 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 kind of getting harder and harder to believe. And I think the people are waking up to it. Take a look at gold. I made a video on Sunday or I posted it on Sunday about uh, gold potentially rising for these next six, seven months around there that we could see some rallies started a couple day rally here but we're not out of the clear yet with gold right there's still a big area of resistance here at 1840 we saw a big strong move there it's potential for an inverse head and shoulders and if we do break out 1920 would be that next level of resistance and then 1960 and you can see here resistance 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 so it's going to be one to watch because this can really get focus over to the miners as well as um silver right so silver would be another commodity to potentially watch right if gold and silver typically move hand in hand but silver you typically get a little bit more movement as far as percentage points and we saw this rising wedge we broke out then we saw this little bull flag we broke out and we came to back test today so it's going to be interesting to see if we get some continued momentum if we get above 25 that could very well send silver to the upper range of this channel and you know it's uh, you know that'd be big for uh, specific miners too as well Let's take a look at Bitcoin because Bitcoin is everything about everything right now. Everyone's talking about it's being at all-time highs. And you can see here we had this little bull flag and we're starting to rip higher. PPO starting to cross over. That's bullish. And now the question is, like, do we just head it straight up from here? Do we keep continuing to press or is it going to slow down? You can take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum also has just been on this monster tear. And there's been a very strong correlation with you know bitcoin and the s&p 500 the s&p 500 has been moving up very strong bitcoin's been moving up strong so one has to think if we're starting to see these overextended areas in the s&p 500 and bitcoin's getting you know a little frothy too on this run-up is there a possibility that we start to see a little bit of weakness up ahead and it's more than possible you so you need to just be very mindful of that and i have an indicator that i'll share with you that i showed how to make it and how i read it and how i use it um, also to call out there's a little bit of a negative divergence there taking place let's look into the indicator which i just talked about it's the sailor to shift rotation tool and you can see here when the sailor to shift rotation tool crosses from above zero right here is zero above zero down through zero it triggers what's called a sell signal it doesn't mean that you need to sell all your bitcoin it doesn't mean that um, but it just means that you need to potentially think about taking profits you know depends on if you're a trader or if you're a long-term hodler you know it's different scenarios for both i'm just telling you what i do um this is the the warning sign and then i typically have a stop loss mental stop loss where i put some alerts and when the alert goes off because you can't, I can't put stop losses on bitcoin and uh, how i trade it so when it when it crosses through and my alerts hit then i get out of my position 
All right, so the, this sell signal right here, it's saved from a very long correction, right? That was over 50% or somewhere around 50%, okay? And then the, the buy signal right here, triggered right here, boom, entered in right here, and we saw a nice big run up. It was about 30% or so, uh, okay? And then we had a sell signal right here, and you can see the sell signal saved us from about a 20% drawdown. And it shook me out of the position until, and then when it shakes me out of the position, because you can see it quickly recovered, the buy signal was triggered. So I just got back in on the next buy signal. And now this buy signal, I'm up 30% of my position. I actually took an Ethereum trade uh, and, and you know, I'm up 30% on that. So awesome, right? So if it crosses down through zero, which it hasn't yet, I'll be putting my stop loss into place. And if I get and if it gets, if I get stopped out, well, then I just wait for the next buy signal. And then I'm just using this indicator to help me catch, and it's on the weekly time frame to catch the long moves, right? So that I can move, you know, try to catch the long moves, but avoid taking these 50% drawdowns. Even if I miss out on this, like, see how this little shakeout took place? I still caught the majority of this run, right? I moved from here to here and then from here to here. I just missed the volatility or a piece of the volatility. And there's nothing to say like, okay, what if this actually draw down to 17,000, right? Then I would miss out on even more of that volatility and potentially pick up a better entry. But that's not what happened here. So we're starting to see this pull back. That's okay. We've seen it pull back here. Boom, right? So the market went up, came back down, moved up. That was a big, huge candle to the downside, but it didn't, it, the sell signal was never triggered. And then started moving up higher, came back down, more volatility, sell signal wasn't triggered until up into this point. So it's it's been pretty accurate as of so far. We have a strategy in place. I have a strategy in place that I use and that is what I'm paying attention to. It does look like, you know, it looks like it's gonna cross down through zero here soon. Now seeing the market overextended, that's kind of where I'm thinking it'll go. But what I think and what I perceive doesn't matter. It What matters is what, what actually takes place, right? So I can think as much as I want. I can create all these narratives. You can too. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, right? So you got to stick to a strategy. And if you have a strategy, great. Let's take a look at the BDI. This is the Baltic Dry Index. Now, this is something that um, Sven shared. And I'm showing this because this is actually, it can be seen as a leading indicator. And it basically measures the cost to ship raw materials, iron ore, cement, coal, steel, etc. And it measures around the world. And typically what it does is it looks at like four sizes of ships, um, the Handy Max, Handy Size, Panamax, Cape Max, etc. And you can just look at this as potentially a supply and demand indicator. And it's a very hard indicator to like manipulate, right? Because we're really looking at, you know, the cost of goods being shipped. And when the market goes up, as you can see, we've been seeing large rips to the upside and then even big drawdowns. Uh, so when you see it turn up, typically means that companies are starting to or continuing to grow or global economies are growing. And commodity prices should technically start to increase in value. And that's important. Right, so we've been seeing this big run up here in 2020, and well, what have we been seeing? Well, commodity prices have been accelerating. And, you know, let me see if I can, no, I don't have the tool on me right now. I was gonna draw on the screen, but so what I have here is the BDI up top, and then I have the CRB index below. Now, I didn't even talk about when it actually goes down, but it's pretty much the vice, you know, it's, it's vice, ver vice versa. So if global economies are growing, companies are starting to grow, stock prices are going, and you know commodity prices and everything is rising while the BDI is going up. Okay, you can see here it started to rise. CRB index started to rise. This was interesting here coming into 2020 how it started to fall very quickly. And when it typically falls, it means that the opposite, right? Companies could be contracting. It could mean that stock prices might contract. It could mean that commodity prices could contract. And we see this sometimes and it could be used as a leading indicator. So you saw like, for example, 2014, it started to draw down, but it started to draw down before the CRB index started to get the hit. And right here and uh, going into 2020, right? In mid 2019, started to fall down very rapidly. And that led right into, obviously, you know, it, was, uh, it led into the CRB index really falling off here during the 2020 pandemic. And then the market, really ramped up higher. CRB index started to play out. Why am I showing you this right now? Well, look at what it's doing right now. 
and CRB index has not been phased in the slightest. Now, this could have a lot to deal with, not just with the demand, but the supply potentially of the ships and the ports, etc. So there could be a lot of distortions taking place, but I wanted to show you what it looks like when this thing falls and how, you know, very shortly after we can see big moves to the downside. And if you compare this to the S&P 500, which is what Sven did, I wanted to show it to commodities because I think there's a tighter correlation there. But you can see like this peak and it started to draw down. We saw the market continue to ramp up, but it was then reversed. All right, we peaked out right here. The market continued to ramp up, but it was completely reversed. The Baltic Dry Index started to really fall down here too, but the market and even commodities at that time started to ramp up higher for quite some time. It was that grind higher, but then it completely got reversed. All right, same here and here. We started to run higher and we ripped down to the downside. We started to fall and we started to rip down. That was during pretty much the same period of time where we're at right now. This is that September, October, November area into beginning November where we saw a lot of price volatility in 2021. Okay, right here, started to head down. We headed down a little bit lower for those couple of weeks. This is the weekly time frame. Right here, we peaked and we started to head down, started to move down slower there. This is a pretty dramatic move to the downside. And I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if many people are kind of overlooking that. And, you know, does it mean anything? I don't know. But do you, do you want to just, you know, treat this like it's nothing? I, I think that's a horrible idea. I tried to look up recent news on it. Uh, I found very few articles being written about the Baltic Dry Index right now, as this has just been completely tumbling from 5,500 down to 27.5. And you can see the market has been pressing higher and higher and higher into these very overextended ranges. So can it continue to press higher? Yeah, obviously we've been we've seen that, but it could be a precursor. It could be a leading indicator that we could see some problems up ahead in the S and P 500 and potentially even commodities. Which brings me to my conclusion here. Yes, we know that the market has been completely bonkers. Valuations, fundamentals, kind of out the window, right? And we're seeing huge moves to the upside, and we're seeing big moves to the downside in various different stocks. And we understand that we have to be tactical, we have to manage risk, and we have to be very careful. I have been looking very closely into agriculture stocks. For example, I shared this one on my Discord tonight, DBA. This is an agriculture fund, and this has what's known as uh, VCP characteristics. That's what Mark Minervini termed. He's a stock market wizard or part of the wizard book. He's an excellent stock trader. And you can see how it, you know, volatility contraction pattern is what VCP stands for. It, you know, we get a volatility and it contracts into a smaller pullback, contracts even more and contract even more. And this really does look like it's going to be exploding to the upside. I made even a shoot YouTube short video on this. Now, keep in mind, you know, the Baltic Dry Index, the, the BDI, also consists of, you know, it's 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 commodities and raw goods. Um, so, and that consists of grains. And grains, you know, is part of agriculture. So, if you are looking at agriculture setups, they do look very strong, but you need to make sure to manage risk. Because if this tells us anything, it tells us that there's a possibility that we might be seeing some weakness up ahead. So something interesting to be very, very careful of. But like I said, the charts and the price action do tell a different story as of right now. But when you look at this, right, the chart was showing a different story then too as well. Um, while, well, where, where's a good example? Yeah, right here, the chart was showing a different story. It was breaking out and moving higher, but this was giving us kind of a heads up notice. So most of all, this is what we need to do. There's a lot of indicators tell us that it's overextended. Let's start looking for areas where we can pull back. And we discussed that today quite in detail in the various different indices sections. If you didn't, you know, if you don't remember those levels, we'll go back into those certain areas. But like always, just be very careful and mindful of what's taking place behind the scenes. I'll see you on the next episode.